Hi, welcome to this series where I go through the ITIL 4 practices individually and I give you the main headline points that you should be aware of and that will help you build your knowledge base generally around ITIL 4. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell, you'll get the notifications. Okay, so let's get to it. First of all, I'm going to be talking about knowledge management. And this is from the general management practice within ITIL 4. So a quick recap on practices very, very quickly. A practice is a set of organisational resources that are designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. Hopefully you will remember that practices are split into three areas. You've got general management practice, service management practice and technical management practice. Within each one, there are a number of practices. So general management, for example, there are 14 and the knowledge management practice is in there that we'll come on to in a moment. Service management practice has 17, technical management practices has three. All of the practices are subject to the four dimensions. I'm sure you're aware of those by now. They're the organization and people, information technology, your partners and your suppliers value streams and processes and of course around all of those dimensions are the pestle factors okay so knowledge management so the purpose of knowledge management it's about maintaining it's about improving the effective the efficient and convenient use of information i emphasize the word convenient information and knowledge across the organization so it's helping your, your business make decisions throughout the service process by looking at the flow of information. So when you use KM, your, sorry, knowledge management, KM, the, the initials, when you, when you use knowledge management, you can, you, you can ensure that it's being given to all of your members of staff and um, um, business units around the world perhaps and it's all one version of the, the the knowledge so that it's it's correct it's up to date it's trustworthy people can rely on it most importantly that it's reliable so during the during the knowledge management practice activity there's there's lots of elements to consider you need to get the information you need to uh, check it and analyze it make, make sure it, it's legitimate it's it's correct you've got to think about storing that information because some of that information may have some value to it you, you don't want that out in the public domain for example you you, you want to you want to keep some uh, um, privacy around, around it and then of course the, sh the sharing of it how are you going to get that out to your employees to your business units what, how, what's the mechanism behind that? So you, there's a whole cycle around knowledge discovery, the creation of knowledge, how you organize that knowledge, how you check it, how, how you validate it, how you assess it. And then elements such as the, the mechanisms behind how, how you're gonna share that. And then perhaps from, a, from an improvement perspective, a continual improvement perspective, how can you reuse that data? Perhaps the, the, there's some, some information there. Also for consideration are, are, are elements such as the metrics. So perhaps you want to um, work out which documents are being used the most, which, which ones are you being used the least? Is there a reason that, that uh, you know, for, for either case, why are the ones that are being used the most being used the most often and why are the ones uh, be, that aren't used quite so often? Why, why is that? Is it because they're not very good or is it because actually people aren't, aren't even experiencing uh, um, any kind of issues or, or need need that knowledge? So there's, a, there's definitely a, a CSI element in, element in there for consideration. So knowledge management, it's not... There's, there's difference with, between knowledge and information. So knowledge isn't information. So knowledge is the use of 
information in a particular context or a particular environment. So, for example, I've certainly been in the case where people have said, oh, I've, I've sent you the, uh, the document or, or the information, and it might be a 500 page document or, or, a, or a process document that, that's got tons of information, lots of charts, lots of information in there, lots of flow charts. And, uh, you know, the question, oh, did, did you not read it? Well, uh, the honest answer is, well, no, I, I, it's 500 pages. No, I didn't read it. All I need to know is what is, you know, what's the headline information? What's the summary? So definitely have a think about that on your knowledge management practice. It's all well and good saying all the information's in the manual. But if that manual or that document is a huge document, that there's a question there as to are you delivering that information correctly? Or are you delivering that to, to individuals in the right format? Because they may well not want to read a 500 page document, may well not have, have, have that information. People are looking for the distilled version of it. What do I need to do? What, how, how do I get out, out, out of this um, uh, situation? Or how do I... Um, gain more knowledge uh, uh, around that area. So definitely just think about how are you delivering it, sticking a load of manuals for an application onto an intranet, that, that's, that's great, but you have to think about the mechanisms as to how, how are people going to get to the really key in, information. So think about distilling it, think about simplifying it. Also, consider how are people going to access it? How, what's the mechanism there? Is, is there, perhaps, are you using a service management tool? Perhaps you're using ServiceNow for the sake of argument or another service management tool. How, how will people access it? Will they access it via some kind of portal or uh, via some kind of intranet or, or other, uh, other document uh, repository of, of some kind? Keeping it up to date is the other point that a knowledge management practice, it, it's not a set it and forget it. You have to continually keep it up to date. Is it still relevant? Are, are the, the knowledge articles, is the knowledge base still relevant? Is it up to date? Think about how, how do you keep it up to date? Certainly with some of the organisations I've worked in, that in order to change a knowledge management article or any data that's subject to change control you know there there, there is a, a governing board around, around document control also just um while i while i talk about it I, i've worked in organizations where um i've seen in people's job descriptions that there's a requirement certainly in it there's a requirement for individuals to put forward and nominate one knowledge article per quarter for the knowledge base so the the um the individuals have to come up with here's here's a knowledge based article here's here's a knowledge management practice activity that i'd like to nominate in, in order to go go into a uh, uh into the practice question quite often why would you do it i mean it's, it's a lot of effort it's a lot of time why why bother so for me, when, when people ask, ask that question around knowledge management, I haven't got time, why, why bother? Definitely think about your customer experience. So it will improve customer experience. Now, why wouldn't you do that? It'll improve your effectiveness. It'll improve your efficiency. It, it can point in, into the direction of shift left, where you're, where you're moving more of the support and that knowledge towards the customer. So it's improving self-service, it's improving satisfaction. That can contribute to quicker resolutions, higher customer satisfaction. Again, why wouldn't you want to do that? The only difficulty I, I would say from experience around, around knowledge management is it's really important to make sure you keep the data up to date. It, it will only be as good as the date that you create it. It's really important as a as a a, a mechanism for contributing and growing that library of, of knowledge, but also a process around checking, is it still relevant? Is it still valid? Does it need updating? Does it um, need reviewing? It can very quickly, knowledge management can very quickly become fairly useless 
in a reasonably short space, space of time. If we talk about the service value chain within ITIL4, so if you remember the service value chain is at the centre of the service value system, so the guiding principles, the governance, service value chain right at the middle, your practices, continual improvement, all delivering stakeholder holder value. If we, if we think around the centre, that service value chain element, knowledge management contributes to all areas of the, 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 the plan, the improve, the engage, the design and transition, the obtain and build, the delivery and support, all delivering products and services. But I, I would call out specific attention to delivery and support and the improve activity. But as I say, knowledge management practice contributes to all elements of the service value chain. Main emphasis, though, delivery support and, and, and improve. So finally, I, I, I would just kind of a, a last two points really would, would be around knowledge comes in three different types. There are three different forms of knowledge. Um, there's explicit, there's implicit, and there's tacit. So if we, if we look at um, explicit, though, so that would be books, that would be uh, um, usually sort of paper, tangible um, in, information, a newspaper, a newspaper article, a, um, a document of, of, of some kind. But, but just think articles, think newspapers, think, think books, magazines. That, that, that kind of kind of approach. Implicit is information that doesn't really originate from a from a tangible source, but it can be, but it can be transferred in into that uh, tangible form, into that explicit form. So it, it could be um, so if I think about myself, for example, I've been in IT service management for over 25 years. I've, I've got a, a lot of experience, a lot of first-hand experience of running IT, operating IT, supporting businesses. So I've, I've built that experience up um, and, and, I, and I have that information. Um, and... Um, tacit, you have to be a little careful about about that. In in that, it it can be a perception or a gut feel of something. Um, certainly, in terms of you, you may meet somebody and you may you may have oh, okay, I've got a bit of a gut feel about about that. Now, some people are very good at it. Some some people perhaps not 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 so much. But it. Tacit's quite a difficult one in terms of capturing it uh, tangibly. It's, it, it's difficult to, to kind of quantify it. Perception, experience, feeling, good feels, emotions. It's, it, it's kind of a difficult one. It's not wrong. It's just, just kind of um, some, something to be aware of. And then finally, just as a, as a kind of a parting point around knowledge, around wisdom, uh, uh, around in information. Somebody once said to me, do you know what the difference between knowledge and wisdom is? And um, they, they sort of jokingly said, knowledge is knowing tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting tomatoes in a fruit salad. So thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for listening. I'll continue to post information on this um, ITIL4 practice series. Thank you very much. Once again, please do subscribe.